Today on the channel, Star Wars Deluxe Edition Boba Fett. Welcome everyone, Kyle here and welcome back to the channel for our daily Star Wars unboxings and today we've got a special one. We've got from the Return of the Jedi, Deluxe Edition Boba Fett. But remember, for all your modern day Star Wars needs, make sure you're hitting up Big Bad Toy Store. Link in the description below. So like we said, we're talking Boba Fett today. He's a big one. He's an important character, kind of, sort of. Yeah, he is. But has there ever been a more popular character of movie universes with less screen time than Boba Fett? I'm sure there's somebody out there. But man, he is next level popular. It's amazing how he caught on and uh, you know stole our heart and never let go for a lot of people out there, including myself. Uh, and started really a whole new universe of Mandalorian madness and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is the original one. This is who we first thought of as Mandalorians back in the day. We got his story fleshed out in the uh, prequels. And uh, we saw him as a little kid and how he came to be. And then we saw in the Clone Wars cartoon of, you know, what happened to him and how he got to where he is by the time of the original trilogy. And then now we've seen him in The Mandalorian, of course, the new uh, TV series on Disney+, Plus, as he made his triumphant return. And now he's getting his own series at the end of 2021, I think around Christmas time. So Boba Fett Mania, running wild like Ultimate Warrior Mania. It's running wild every day. And this one just was recently released. It was one of those weird things that this doesn't happen very often in the toy industry. We've all been burned many a times. They say, hey, release date, April 1st. Is it an April Fool's Day joke? Who knows? But April 1st was the release date for this. And what do you know? I just walk into my Target and there's a whole case chilling on the shelf. Just like that. And uh, many a shelves out there. As I did the old Target app and uh, a lot of the Targets around me had inventory that whole day into the next day even. And then I haven't seen him since. Jar Jar was moved to clearance, unfortunately, the deluxe Jar Jar. Not a success. We all saw that coming. Down to $8.99 in some areas. You geniuses that play the long game, you got a deal on Jar Jar if you paid $8.99. It's an okay figure. $8.99, it's definitely worth it. But Boba Fett is the discussion point today. A bit of a cash grab, possibly, knowing that, hey, people will upsell. They'll spend an extra $10 to get a Boba Fett. I don't know if it comes with enough extra weapons to really say, you know, this is worth it. He does come with uh, three flame effects, a backpack, and then uh, two, two guns. And one of the guns is broken, of course. So th I think the Star Wars and Hasbro team knew that, hey, people will pay an extra $10 for Boba Fett. Let's put it in a deluxe box, maybe an extra flame effect that we wouldn't have got with a traditional release, and we'll call it good. That's the way I see it. And I, it's smart business because obviously it worked. We don't see him on the pegs right now. I'm sure he will be uh, back out in stores though very soon and elsewhere. So let's do it like we normally do it. Let's look at the packaging first and go from there. So we got the big Star Wars Black Series package. He's got the green because it's Return of the Jedi inspired uh, Boba Fett. Like I said, a lot of accessories in there. I don't know if it's a whole lot more than we would have got with a traditional Black Series. Maybe one more accessory at, at best. So there it is. Top, nothing, nothing. Cool uh, mural on the side. I would love to keep my boxes just to keep this and have this as cool art. Maybe one day they'll release prints or something. I could very easily see them at San Diego Comic-Con or something like that saying, hey, we're selling these prints. Here's each set and all that. I think that would be really cool and neat to have. There's that back packaging, cool glamour shot, all the warnings down below. You got that green stripe from Return of the Jedi, Star Wars Black Series logo up top, and then you got the Boba Fett in green up top as well with a little blurb. Let's see what it says about our old pal Boba. Boba Fett. With his customized Mandalorian armor, deadly weaponry, and silent demeanor, Boba Fett was one of the most feared bounty hunters in the galaxy. Right after our old pal Snaggletooth, he's the second one I wouldn't mess with. I wouldn't mess with Snaggletooth, and then after that, Boba Fett's the one I wouldn't mess with. I don't know about you. Who is your favorite bounty hunter of all time? I don't know. I think Boba Fett's probably up there. I really do like him. I'm one of the people that got caught in the madness. But as of late, as you guys know watching my videos, Snaggletooth is making a meteoric rise to the top of the Bounty Hunter Guild for me. Um, I like him a whole lot. Uh, Forlom, Zuckus, I guess Bosk is probably up there pretty high for me. Uh, something about a lizard person that just stole my heart and never let go. 
So there's a lot of cool bounty hunters. And when I do eventually get my display set up, I'm going to have that Empire scene, hopefully, with uh, Dengar and IG-88 and Boba Fett and everybody else. I think that'd be cool. Forlom, Zuckus, a lot of bounty hunters out there. Who's your favorite? You guys tell me in the comments below. All right, we've talked enough. Let's get him open. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what all the fuss is about. See you later. How about a little plastic prison to start things off? Love the plastic prison. That's Boba Fett. You know him. You love him. You want some more of him. Now, there's been some uh, complaints. See you later. See you later. I haven't really seen a review on him. I've seen some posts and some news groups and stuff that people were not pleased that apparently, and it does look to be the case on mine as well, his visor is kind of spread out. It's just a little amiss, we'll call it. We'll say amiss. Got to put it under a hair dryer on low or probably preferably some hot water. Dunk him in there. It'll kind of straighten itself out. Not super, super noticeable. I'm not as nitpicky as maybe some are on that, but it's definitely noticeable a little bit. So I will do that. I'll heat that up and put that in there. There it is right there. All right, let's knock him out here in the plastic prison. Pop it out, maybe. Maybe. Pop him out here. Well, there's a lot more accessories. I mean, there's a lot of flame effects, stuff like that, which is cool. I don't, I don't hate that. We got the uh, blast, his blaster that got sliced in half by old Luke Skywalker. There it is. See you later. Oh, look at that first. That's kind of a neat feature. You got the little yellow color, a little attention to detail on there. I definitely don't hate that. Slide that in here. And it goes back together. But you can have it being split by Luke if you want to do some recreate the scene. Or you have the regular version. So part of me believes that this is one that brings it to the deluxe level. This is one of the things that bring it to the deluxe level. Is I feel we would have got this uh, traditional Boba Fett blaster if we would have got it. It's funny, it reminds me of uh, an old gunslinger. And that's kind of what the Mandalorian is and kind of what Boba Fett, Boba Fett is. Uh, an old school gunslinger from the old westerns. The old John Ford westerns. Uh, in another life, I'm actually one college credit away from a minor in film. Yes, that's true. I could be a film. Film noir was my expertise back in the day. It's been a while, but I, I went through many a movie classes because, hey, guess what? Movie classes are easy, and they give you credits towards college, and that's what I did. Boy, I could tell you some stories about my college days, and one of these days, maybe we will. But uh, a minor in film, and that's what it reminds me of some of these John Ford Westerns, it, just with an extra piece and an extra piece to kind of galaxy it up but it, at the heart of it it is a western pistol all right we got his backpack i love the color combination that is very cool that yellow this just screams early 80s late 70s to me the color patterns here i absolutely love it and then we got the missile here at the top that fits right in fits right in there it doesn't shoot out or anything but you can have it in or out or if you want to do some photography have it flying through the air whatever you want but there is his backpack we all know about it and then he's got the thrusters right here on the end you pop these bad boys right in there, I think. I think. Yes. And uh, yes, let's see. A little hard to get in there on mine. But there they are. You put those thrusters on, you can have him uh, marching off to battle, flying around, whatever you want to do. So that is cool. And then this one would go on the end of his gun, I assume, right? No. Where does this go? Where could it go? Oh, duh. On his arm, probably. Right, probably here, I would assume. You know what happens when you assume? Oh, geez. Pretty sure it goes here. I probably need to play with it a little bit. Oh, there it is. There it goes. So, I don't know. I, it's okay. It's okay on his arm. That's probably how I'll display him, but it's... I want to say it's not realistic, but none of this is really realistic. But I would think this would melt his hand right off if he was actually doing that. Like so. What do we got here? So, then we got... Oh, yeah, he's got his uh, little rope weapon, shoots out like that. We all remember that from the movie, of course. Let me take this off. I mean, that's a neat effect. It's a cool flame effect. I don't know about this rope, though. It kind of gets in the way a little bit. I guess you need to just put it back. What else we got on here? So I know some people have been complaining. I've seen in, in groups as well that this isn't, there's a, a little, I don't even know what you call it, but it's not on here. It's not painted in, and apparently it might be fixed in later series. We'll see if that happens. Uh, his ear earpiece, I don't know what you want to call it, his antenna, there we go, an antenna. His antenna does not fold down, and we're going to compare this one to the Diamond Select version and uh, the Archive Edition, or the two Boba Fets I have out here to compare to, uh, and we'll talk about that. 
His mask definitely needs fixed under some hot water. The more I look at it, the more kind of weird it looks. Uh, he does have articulation, of course, at the knees and the ankles, the wrists and the elbows, the head and the waist. So you can get him into some positions. This is a, a hard good, hard goods plastic cape, whereas the archive edition, I believe, came with soft goods. Uh, we'll check that out here, like I said, in a second. He's got his pouches on the side, his big, uh, his big belt with pouches, and that is movable. It is not removable, but it is movable, so you got some flex in that, so that's kind of cool. The shoulder gauntlets can flex up as well. You got the Mandalorian logo right there, which is cool. All in all, a solid figure. I mean, Boba Fett's going to sell no matter what version you put out there for him. Uh, it's just the way it is. He is one of the most popular characters, and like I said, it's crazy. Somebody with as limited amount of screen time as he had uh, is stole so many hearts, but sometimes that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Now, can I get this backpack in? Will it stay in? It's got three points to connect, but boy, it's not as easy as I'd like, but there we go. So there it is. I, I'd say it's pretty good. Let's see. Does he fit on a ringside collectible stand? We talk about those all the time as well. Uh, spend your money on your figures, not your stands. Discount code KYLE. Save yourself 10% on your Black Series stands. And there it is. I got to figure out how I want to pose him. What weapon? Do I want the flame effects going? Do I want him going full bore? I got to decide all that. But all in all, not too shabby. A lot of accessories there. I think one extra flame effect possibly for his hand. The extra gun that gets cut in half. And then that little rope off his hands. That's really what you're paying for in the deluxe version. Uh, that's the way I see it. I don't think there's a really that many more bells and whistles that we're getting there. But uh, you guys tell me. Now we compare it to the Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett from the Archive Edition that I picked up. Uh, I don't know, when was this out? A year ago? Two years ago? Similar but different, we'll call it. Very similar. A lot of similarities here. Pouches and stuff. Yeah, you know, he's got his tools down here in his, uh, by his legs. I mean, this is somewhat of a repaint. He does have a holster on this older one. He does not have that holster. He's got his braids. Just some coloring differences, of course. The backpack is the same, obviously, but it does not have a spot on the back to put in the blaster, so it's new blaster effects here. Just different paint jobs. You know, I can see some people saying, you know what, I have this one, I don't need this one. I think you would be okay doing that. Depends how big of a fan you are. If the color differences and some of the extra bells and whistles are enough for you, maybe that uh, says you want it. He does have the soft goods cape on this one, where the new one does have the hard plastic cape. So it's kind of pick your poison type thing. How many of these do you need? Um, I could definitely see, though, a lot of Star Wars collectors are pretty hardcore collectors. You put this one with your bounty hunters in your Empire scene. You save this one for your Return of the Jedi off the skiff and sail barge, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's what you use this one for. You know, the gold standard, though, for me is this Boba Fett, the Diamond Select. Uh, this is a very solid figure. Unfortunately, it does not scale. We talk about it a lot. We talk about Diamond Select, Marvel Select figures a lot on the Marvel end of things. Uh, big figures that kind of scale with your Marvel Legends. Star Wars just came out with Darth Maul. I slept on that one. I kind of regret that. But I did pick up the Boba Fett. These were Disney Store exclusives. I got them on Disney Store online. I'm not sure if they're still available or not, but I'm sure you guys can find it if you want to. But this Boba Fett is very solid. Uh, very cool. A lot of good detail. A lot of good stuff with it all around. His visor... Uh, his visor intended is movable on this one. He comes with blast effects on his arms, just like this one does. But a little bit bigger, a little bit detailed, more detailed, I'd say. Uh, really crosses the line with a lot of Diamond Select. They're basically right in between a figure and a statue. They're somewhere in between, where these are more figure than statue. It was kind of how I always put it. But you really cannot go wrong with this Boba Fett. I was pleasantly surprised. It was kind of an impulse purchase when they went live. And this one does fit on a stand as well. Fits on a ringside collectible stand just fine, which I like that a lot. So interesting Boba Fett through the years. I had the original one back as a kid, the old Kenner one. I had that one. I had the Power of the Force one. I had the Slave one. Uh, I've got the Vintage Collecting Slave one coming sometime this summer. I have that pre-ordered through Big Bad Toy Store. Link in the description below. So Boba Fett's a character we're going to get reuse. We're going to get re-released on a pretty good clip. You can count on that. He's popular. It's just like Luke Skywalker. You know you're going to get a new Luke Skywalker every year. There's just no way that's not going to happen. Boba Fett's about to that point, crazy enough, being you know in the movie for a total of probably five minutes. And that could be generous at this point. I'm not even sure. 
but I like it a lot. It wasn't an April Fool's Day for me. I'm glad I picked this up. Uh, it's going to go good in my Empire set display. This one will go good in my uh, Return of the Jedi display, of course. And I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. Uh, but this one truly is probably my favorite one, the Diamond Select. But just not sure where I'm going to display that one. Maybe it'll be somewhere in my office, somewhere off the beaten path as kind of just a sub display. Um, that's kind of my thoughts there. So you guys tell me in the comments, what is your favorite Boba Fett? Did you pick them up? Do you have all these? Do you pick and choose? Tell me your thoughts, and also tell me who your favorite bounty hunter of all time is. I wouldn't be shocked to see Snaggletooth starting to make this list. He is on the rise. His stock is on the rise. We're probably going to see a Snaggletooth movie sometime in 2022. I'm going to put the words down on it. Maybe I'll get a, a role in the film. We'll see. That would be great. Um, but leave me your comments. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We got new videos every single day. And then on top of that, you know what? I'm dedicated to you guys out there. I'm doing a bonus Star Wars unboxing every single day in 2021. Can I keep it up? Can you keep me honest? We'll see. The only way to know is to hit the old notification bell and subscribe to the channel. And then uh, don't forget to follow me on social media, at SirPaul64 on Twitter, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on Instagram, below the collar.com, Kyle Peterson. And then, whoa, whoa, we're taking a header left and right. So that's it. For the Boba Fett boys, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.